Okay, here, let me um, show you what would happen when we are sequencing a DNA fragment. So say this is the DNA fragment you're trying to sequence. And um, you have to have some information about it so that it can make a sequencing primer. So there are ways around this. Imagine that this blue thing is some um, human DNA and pretend you have no idea whatsoever of any sequence. How do you even start that? So one way around it is that you clone, you glue this piece of DNA to, okay, let's uh, make this one here. Okay, this yellow thing that I'm drawing here, oh, it's bacterial DNA. So this would be a plasmid, which is a circular DNA molecule uh, in bacteria. What we, what we can do is put that piece of human DNA glued to this piece of bacterial DNA. And you might be wondering, how does that even help? Well, it helps because we have uh, this, this sequence here. We actually have the whole thing. Um, but all we need is the, the bordering sequence. So we call that flanking sequence. Always we need this to know this much so that we can design a primer. So a piece, uh, primer a sequencing primer would be a short DNA fragment that will align with this. And then you're going to make uh, the new strand here. So these two would separate. We have one primer per reaction, so per sequencing reaction. So one primer, let's do it in purple. Okay, one sequencing reaction has this primer here that's complementary. Well, wait, let's move that. That defeats the purples here in case here. We don't know the blue sequence. We do know the yellow sequence. Okay, so that primer is complementary to the, this bacterial sequence that we know. And then uh, it's going to complement. So that strand and it's going to copy this one. So make the new one. And as you learned before, it's going to make several different lengths of fragment. And then you organize them by length. And that's how you read from the shortest fragment to the longest. So what happens then is you could keep sequencing just this this trend here, we're just gonna call it top strand because that's how I drew it. And so you could do this and then now you have this, this information and then you could design a primer in the next sequencing round that aligns here. And now you gain this other information on your next sequencing round. And you, keep, you can keep doing that. So this is called primer walking. Or you could just make this fragment shorter and then you reach the other end more quickly. That's more like the approach people use now. And the other thing to speed up the sequencing is instead of only sequencing the top strand, we also sequence, the, we're gonna call this the bottom strand. So there will be a primer that annuls, annuls to this sequence here. And in my sequencing round, okay, again, this much information. And right now, okay, imagine that the purple is my first sequencing run. I have that, I have that. They still, this end doesn't overlap with this end. So I, I have to keep doing this. Let's pretend that I'm the next sequencing round. Okay, I design a primer here and it keeps going. So I am gaining this information on the sequencing round and now uh, this end overlaps with this end, but this is going to be like, let's say ATC. This, so that A is going to bind the uh, T, and then that T an A, and then a C a G. So this guy will be G A T. Right? So, uh, because I'm going to read from 5 prime to 3 prime. When you are doing question, I don't remember the number, but that's the one that I sent you the message about, you have this read and you have this read. And for you to be able to put the two pieces together, 
you keep this sequence, you reverse complement this one, so that then you're going to see that um, the letters here are going to match up with the letters there of, of the reverse complement. And then they will stitch the two pieces together. So that's how physically what that uh, question means when you get a read of one DNA strand and a need of the other DNA strand, why you need to reverse complement the bottom strand so that you can build your contig.